Okay, we're back. The last section, the last section in chapter seven is mass limiting reagent problems. There they are, mass limiting reagent problems. Pages 120 through 122, exercise 7H. So, what's the main deal here? Well, you gotta remember, you can't tell just from the starting amounts of reactants, which will be the limiting reagent. You you are the one who must do calculations to find out. Okay, so that's the problem we're going to work on. Let's see if we can work it. You write it down, do all the work that you need to do, hit pause, and come back. All right, hit pause. All right, you're back. Hopefully, you did some work. You've got a good idea what to do. All right, so what's the first step? Well, let's see. Um, oh, man, I don't, I'm feeling a little... Ah, that's great. Okay, first step, always balance the equation. Make sure you're balanced. So how do we go about doing that business? Most complicated molecule, one. Therefore, four of these. If that's a ten for the hydrogen on this side, then I need 10 hydrogens, which means that has to be a 5. So what's the total of oxygen here? Well, that's 8 oxygens plus 5 oxygens is 13 oxygens. And that won't work. It's, work. it's 6.5, right? So we have to change this up, make this a 2, which makes this an 8, right? makes this a 10, right, because that makes 8 carbons and 8 carbons, 20 hydrogens, 10 times 2 is 20 hydrogens, so that means 10 oxygens plus 16 oxygens makes 26 oxygens, so to get 26 oxygens, this has to be a 13, 13 times 2, so this is a 2 moles to 13 moles to 8 moles to 10 moles ratio. Great. Well, this is a limiting reagent problem, right? Because you've got some amount of this and some amount of this, and it's up to you to decide which one of those reacts to give you the correct amount of CO2. And the way we do that is we do each one of these, go through the process, and then pick the smaller amount of product. You certainly can't guess just from these starting amounts because it's the same amount. You couldn't guess which one would give you the smaller amount. So you have to go through the process. 17 grams of C4H10 might be the one that reacts. Or 17 grams of O2 might be the one that reacts. These are not gram to gram ratios. These are mole to mole ratios, so we have to convert to moles. How do you convert to moles? You use the periodic table step, the molar masses, molar mass, okay, grams on the bottom per one mole, C4H10. I'm going to do this by sort of doing all the, the dirty work with the units and the labels and then go back and do my calculations. Well, I don't know. I'll go ahead and do it now. Well, you know what O2 is. That's 16 times 2 or 32.00. What about C4H10? That's butane. Carbon, 4 times 12.01 grams per mole. And hydrogen, is 10 times 1.008 grams per mole. Trust me, these are the values off of our periodic tables. Your periodic table in your textbook as well. 12.01 times 4 equals plus 1.008 times 10 equals 58 point one two grams per every one mole. Okay, so 
58.12 and that's how we did the work I hit it for me again sorry about that okay so what have we done for each one of these steps we've converted to moles of my starting materials now let's compare the starting material to the material that we want to look at the amount of product that's made so you have to look at the mole to mole ratio for each of these I hope you recognize these repeating steps that happen with each one of these right there's eight moles of CO2 that are formed per every two moles of C4H10 that react down here there's eight moles of CO2 that form for every 13 moles of O2 that react All right so this is the amount of CO2 in moles that would form 17 grams of this butane reacted but I don't care about the moles I want to know the grams so you have to multiply by the molar mass grams per every one mole I've done this so many times I know what that value is but just for fun I'll show you notice that it's the same for both periodic table molar mass the only difference is we sort of flip conversion factor over here Carbon is 12.01 oxygen times 1. Oxygen is 16.00 times 2, or 32.00. That adds up to 44.01 grams per 1 mole for carbon dioxide. This is for the butane. Okay, so that's where that came from. The moles of CO2 cancel for both. And this is the grams of CO2 possible or grams of CO2 possible. And you have a job to do after we do this calculation, both of which will be limited to two sig figs. We take 17 divided by 58.12 times 8 divided by 2 times 44.01 and I get 51 grams of CO2 possible if all 17 grams of the C4H10 react and if we do the same calculation out here I get 14 grams possible of the CO2 if all 17 grams of the O2 reacts. So what does that tell you? How do you have to decide? Well, you have to pick the smallest. You have to pick the smallest amount of product. this one. So 14 grams of CO2 is actually the amount that gets made right there. And this was just a test calculation that we can forget about because it doesn't really happen. That's the right answer. That's the final answer. And you are going to have to do that throughout your chemistry career. Lots and lots and lots and lots of times. So be ready. Get up there. Practice. 7-H a bunch and be good at it. Good luck.